I'll have you listed. Councillor Hatfield. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I had attended a scaled-down seminar on uh, the weekend, and uh, some of the points that uh, Mr. Boscario have mentioned, uh, Bill, I just want to touch with you on, uh, I don't know what involvement, if any, you've had with the public arts groups over the, over the years during um, planning, but in this case here, uh, are the Finellis open to meeting with, uh, be it the scale down people or a public art committee or whomever, um, to talk about the possibility of having public art uh, at this location as it as it gets developed? Sure, we we're, our company's prepared to meet with anybody. Uh, one of the things I know, last summer, a friend of mine, Ali Marku, had a cruise the dub in front of Home Depot behind AMW on Tecumseh Road where once a week the um, the people that have fixed up cars in, in, in Windsor would meet there and then he would put on a stage with rock and roll musicians. He would bring in um, sort of an outdoor sock hop with running shoes, I guess. I don't, I don't know what it was, but it was a lot of fun. And, and Mr. Boscario mentioned the possibility of having a small stage area um, I, I just want to get your opinion on whether there might be room when you have a parking lot that I imagine as this gets developed you will have uh, to use that on on, uh, on evenings when it isn't as busy as other evenings it may be. Are you open to some kind of discussion on that as well? I can't say yes or no, but we'd give it some consideration. And it always comes up and it came up at PAC again and that's the use of uh, mature shade trees on on development such as this. Are you also willing to consider something like that? Yes, there is a, a stand of trees on the site. In fact, I met with our uh, one of our superintendents. We are cleaning up some of the scrub bush right now. You may have noticed uh, there's a couple of older houses on it that uh, these are properties that we just <coughs> recently acquired that uh, uh, will be demolished. So we are kind of cleaning up a bit, but the, the mature trees and whatnot is understood that uh, they will not be removed. Thank you. To the administration at the appropriate time. Point of clarification, Councillor Hatfield. What's a what's a sock hop? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Relax. Of the delegation, any questions? Of the administration, I have Councillors Dilkins, Halberstadt, and Hatfield. You might be kidding, Your Worship, but I'm not. <laughs> I'd really like to know. Uh, Ms. Doyle, I just have a question regarding uh, the mixed use and the in particular the H symbol, actually, not the mixed use. Uh, Mr. Tanner and Ms. Kiefner were up here suggesting that there is no servicing agreement in place and that the traffic impact analysis has not been completed. Can you please explain to us how the H symbol protects that piece of property from further being developed until that information is in place? Through you, Your Worship. Councillor Dilkins, uh, basically that's what the H is intended to do. It's, it's to put it in a holding category until the required studies are completed. We will not be issuing any uh, construction permits, we will not be executing any site plan control agreements, uh, finalizing any development approvals until those studies are completed. And that H is on there. If it changes ownership, changes title, that runs with the land. So in light of the fact that that entire area with E.C. Rowe and Banwell being part of an environmental assessment, when the traffic analysis or the traffic impact studies are initiated, what parcel of land or what roadway are they looking at? Are they looking at the current roadway or are they be looking at what the potential would be? And I guess what I'm what I'm trying to get to, <clears throat> excuse me, is would we would we would they be expected to wait until the decision of that of that environmental assessment is back to determine what will be happening in that area? Uh, through your worship. Uh Kelsey Dill, because I, I will refer you know part of this question to my colleagues in the traffic engineering area, but I do want to iterate that Throughout our report and our process, we've made it very clear that whatever information is available at the time, so being that both environmental assessments are currently underway, both the uh, Banwell and the Manning Road, so there's actually, in our view, an appropriate time to deal with it because these, these assessments are already underway. Mm -hmm. So now we have this information. Now we're aware of what this development, uh, potentially what kind of uses could be. Uh, you know, developed on, on these lands in the 30-acre parcel of the remaining uh, agricultural lands. The rest of it's already, as it was indicated, 
designated uh, business uh, park and zone business park. So the traffic impacts are already consideration of the, what those zoning and official plan designation is already in place. I should also add that the environmental assessments also recognize that these lands that are subject to rezoning are currently designated mixed use. So there's a number of uses that could go on there. Commercial, office, institutional, residential. Any combination thereof. So just to be clear, the, the, the decision on the traffic impact analysis, we're not waiting for the environmental assessment to come back. You've already s suggested that the land, because of the nature of the zoning in that area, that that would already be taken into consideration. As long as that information is available, then the you know, through the traffic impact assessment, that information has to be shared both from the town of Tecumseh and the city of Windsor that that information would have to be provided in order for the proponents to complete the necessary traffic impact studies. If that information is not available, then those traffic impact st statements or studies, I should say, will have to wait. It will depend on the availability of that information. Okay, thank you. Councillors Halberstadt, Hatfield and Geniac. Thank you, Worship. Hey, Ms. Doyle, uh, the uh, proponents uh, suggested that planning decided that, uh, or uh, um, advised uh, him and his company to um, uh, to change the, re to apply for a rezoning uh, that would allow big box retail. And I guess the question is, I know uh, two or three weeks ago, we had um, a group of planners uh, led by Tom Hunt from our uh, from our de planning department come to us and asking for endorsement of a planner sustainability document uh, with uh, with the, his uh, cohorts from the, from the county and um, uh, you know the the whole uh, I guess the whole thrust of that was uh, you know walkable communities uh, uh, let's try to get out of our cars energy prices uh, soaring. Uh, uh, global warming, et cetera. And I, I guess I, I just wonder, uh, is this consistent with what council um, approved uh, just uh, a matter of weeks ago? Uh, through your worship, uh, Councillor Halber said I was also part of that group, although I didn't attend the EPAC meeting, but as you recall, was part of the presentation, the delegation before council that made that presentation and working with our colleagues in the county. Uh, very much so, because in the mixed use <laughs> designation that we have in the official plan and maybe what council because you don't have that information in front of you but the planners have design guidelines set up specifically for developments such as this and I, I do want to point out that you know the information with regard to the arts and making sure there's pedestrian linkage there are specific very specific criteria and policies in the in the design guidelines so as part of our review when we receive a site plan and our staff are going through this, the planners are looking specifically for making sure that the land is designed to foster distinctive and attractive identity. So something specific, unique to that area. The other point I want to stress is that the urban form has to be compact and it has to be pedestrian friendly. So those are very key to any development of these lands. And those very much fall in line with the sustainable development that we were referring to. Um, there's a number of other criteria that you know also get looked at, but those are two that are paramount: making it distinct, making it attractive, making it pedestrian friendly, and of course making sure that it is you know considering all the other uh, mitigation of any potential impacts, be it traffic. Those are all looked at. Okay, so. Um, I guess the, the the attractive big box is, is what we're looking for in this case. We never at any time administration or planning ever suggested that an application be made for a big box for the record. We routinely meet with property owners, with developers. We meet with them, we discuss what we feel are consistent uh, land uses that will conform to the area. When we looked at the surrounding lands, we looked at the existing business park designation. We realized that this small, this piece of 30 acres relative to the remaining holdings is the only area that's not designated business park or mixed use.